Hey guys, we're gonna continue with the book Cracking Codes with Python and in this video we're gonna cover strings and how to write programs. Let's get right into it. In Python we work with little chunks of text called string values or strings. All of our cipher and hacking programs deal with string values to turn plain text into ciphertext or the other way around. We can store string values inside variables just as with integer and floating point values. And when we type a string, we put it between two single quotes. So as an example, we can define a variable spam and then assign a string value to it. So here we are using single quotes and in between those we have our string value. Now as before, we can just reference this variable value and then we can see the string value stored in it. Of course, we can also create other types of strings. So basically anything inside of single quotes will be displayed as a string. There's also an empty string by simply not having anything in between single quotes. Now we can also add two string values together called concatenation to create a new string. As an example, if we have the string hello and we add a plus sign and then a second string, for example, world, and if we press enter, we can see we get a single string back, which is a combination of the two strings that we have up here. So we can use the plus operator here to add or concatenate two strings together, or of course to add two numbers together. But it's not possible to combine different types. So if we try, for instance, to add 42 to hello, we are going to get an error back, specifically a type error, because we can only concatenate string values and no other values, for example, integer values. We can also replicate strings by taking a string and then using the asterisk symbol and a number. And that's going to repeat the string the specified number of times and then create a new string based on that. But in this case, it's not possible to actually multiply two strings together because that simply doesn't make any sense. So if we try to replicate the string hello and the string world, we're gonna get back an error because we can't multiply sequences by non-integer values. Now our encryption programs often need to get a single character from a string, which we can accomplish through string indexing. And to better understand indexing, let's have a look at an example. So let's say we have a variable called spam and we have the string hello assigned to it. Now we can index into each one of the individual characters that make up that string and retrieve the value. Specifically, each of those characters here, for example, the H at the beginning here, has a specific index within the string. We start at zero, so this would be position zero, then we have position one, two, three, and four. So to reference the first character within our string, we simply use brackets, and in between those brackets, we type in the index that we want to reference. In this case, when we type in spam, index zero, we get back h, which is the first index. If instead we type in spim at index one, we get the second character here, the e back. And of course we can repeat the same steps. We can, for example, have a look at index two, which would give us back the l in our string. It's important to note that we shouldn't go outside of the bounds of the index. So in this case here with the string hello, we have index zero all the way up to index four. So if we try to reference anything outside of those bounds, for example, index five, which does not exist, we get an index error. So you always have to pay attention to that. We can also use negative indexes. So for instance, if we take the string hello, rather than, for example, having a look at index one, we could have a look at negative index one. And in that case, we would start at the very end of the string, so that means Rather than starting from the beginning, we would start from the end. So hello at index negative one, we get back the very last character, so the O in this case. If instead we have a look at index negative five, we can have a look, so because it's negative, we start from the end. So this would be minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four, minus five. So this should give us back actually the first character, the H. And that's of course the same as simply referencing the character at index zero of that particular string. If we want to get more than one character from a string, rather than using indexing, we can use slicing. A slice also uses the square bracket notation, but
but has two integer values that we provide rather than one. So let's take a look at an example. So we can take the string howdy for instance. We use the square brackets again, but rather than simply entering a single index, we would say we have a look at this particular slice. So here we would have a look at index zero, which is the h, all the way up to, but not including index three. So that's exclusive. So that means zero, one, two, three. That would be the d. Since that's exclusive, we would set back how, which is exactly the return value here. So the second bound here is always exclusive and the first bound here is inclusive. Let's use that for a more complicated string. And for that, we can have a look at hello world. And let's first have a look at, at the slice from index zero all the way up to, but not including index five. That would give us back the word hello. We can of course also use negative indices. So in this case here, we start from negative index six all the way up to, but not including index negative one. So if we count from the back, we know this is minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four, minus five, minus six. So we start from W all the way up to, but not including the exclamation mark. So this should give us back the word world. Now, if we want to start at the very beginning of a string, or we want to go all the way up to the very end of a string, we can use a short end form. So in this case here, instead of typing howdy, with slice zero to index three. We could instead simply omit the zero at the beginning, and this will still start at the very first position at index zero. And the same is true if you want to start from a certain index all the way to the end. So in this case here, we start at index two inclusive, so that is a W, and then we go all the way to the end. So we get the entire remaining string all the way to the last index position. Now we can also print out our string values by using the print function. For that we would type print and then the string. And as we press enter, this is going to be printed out. And the print function takes whatever argument we provide and automatically turns it into a string. So here, for example, if we print out the value 42 and press enter, we also get back 42. So this value will be printed out for us. There's also something called escape characters which we would use, for example, if we want to use a single quote character inside of a string. And if we just typed it in, we can already see based on the syntax highlighting that there's an issue going on. Here we have our single quote character, but this would actually end our string and the rest of it will be evaluated as a variable. So as we run this, we can see that we get a syntax error here. In order to still display that properly, we need to escape the first single quote character and to do that we can simply use the backslash character and here we can see automatically based on the color that our syntax highlighting works again the backslash character here is the escape character and therefore this quotation character will be ignored it will not end the string but it's going to be displayed so as we run this we can see it's typing out exactly what we want and apart from that there are of course other escape characters so for example we could add a new line or for example, a tab character by using backslash followed by the escape character that we want to use. Now strings don't always have to be between two single quotes in Python. We could also use double quotes instead. So for instance, we could use double quotes here around this string to print it out rather than using single quotes. It's just important that we can't mix and match single quotes and double quotes. So if we were to replace the first double quotes here with a single quote, then we would get an error message. So we always need to make sure that if we create a string with double quotes, then we also end it with double quotes. Now, until now, we simply used our idle shell to type our instructions into the interactive shell. And that works fine for single instructions. But since we want to write larger programs, we actually need to work with a file editor. And for that, we can go to idle, then select file on top and then new window or alternatively it's called new file. Now this is going to open a new window for us and we have a blinking cursor. We can also see that we no longer have that prompt displayed that was shown in the interactive shell. Now let's start out by writing a short program and we can start out by providing a comment at the very top which we add by simply using the hash sign followed by some text and this text is going to be ignored when we execute the program. It's just for us to know what this program is about. 
So once we added the comment, we can add a print statement here. And we are simply going to say we want to print out hello world. We then have a second print statement where we ask the user for their name. And we then use a new function that we haven't seen so far, which is the input function. The input function allows users to provide some input, which will be saved as a string and assigned to the variable in this case, the variable my name. We can now go ahead and print out a statement using the variable my name that we just saved. So here we're printing out it is good to meet you, comma, my name. And since my name is a string value, that's going to be concatenated, so added to the end of the existing string here. Now, in order to later on execute our program, we still need to provide a name. So as we press file save or the shortcut command S, we can then provide a name under which we want to save this. So here we are calling it hello.py. PY stands for Python because this is a Python program. Let's click on save and then we save this file. Now, in order to run our program, we can select idle again and can then select the run option and then select run module. The shortcut is F5 and this is going to run our program. We can see that first of all, the first print statement is executed, which we wrote up here, hello world. And then the second print statement, what is your name? After that, we have the input function and the input function expects some input from us. So therefore we have this blinking cursor, which means we need to provide some input. So in this case, I'm going to add my name. And as soon as I press enter, my input will be saved to the variable my name. And then we have our final print statement that's being executed, which is going to say it is good to meet you. And then followed by the values that we provide here. So let's press enter. And now we have our final print statement. It is good to meet you, Robin, which is exactly the print statement we find here. Now after that, when the program executed the last line of code, it stops. So that means at this point, the program has terminated or exited. And now let's practice what we learned and let's have a look at the practice questions. The first question is if we have a string value of cats that's assigned to the variable spam, then what do the following lines print? So first, if we add spam together three times, and then if we use the multiplication operation, to multiply spam three times. So of course we know the first one here is an example of string concatenation. That means the value of cats will be added together three times. And the second input here is an example of string replication where we basically multiply or repeat the string three times. So both inputs here should give us the same output. Let's have a look at that. And for that we can head over to idle. And of course as a starting point we know we have the variable spam which has cats as a string value assigned so let's go ahead and let's add spam together let's press enter and we can see indeed cats is repeated three times in here and then we can multiply spam the string times three and again we have the same output here of course the second one is a little bit shorter a little bit more succinct and especially if you wanted to repeat a string more than three times maybe 30 times then of course the second way would be a preferred option because it requires much less code to accomplish. Now the second question is, what do the following lines print? So here we have two print statements and we can see in the first case, we have multiple backslashes included. We know this is an escape character. In this case, after the backslash, we have an N. In lowercase N, if you think back, stands for a new line. That means whenever this backslash N is inserted, that will add a new line to our output. So it should point out Dear Alice, comma, new line, how are you, new line, sincerely, new line, Bob. Now in the second case, we have print hello plus hello. So this is an example of string concatenation. So both strings should be added together. Let's first have a look at the first example here. And let's open idle. And if we type or copy in this particular print statement and we press enter, we can indeed see that we have four different lines. So each of the backslash n sections here created a new line. So our text is a little bit more nicely formatted. In the second case, when we concatenate those two strings together, we can see they're added to each other. There's no space character in between. So both of those strings would be added without any space in between. Now in the third exercise here, we have a variable spam, which is assigned to this string here, which is a sentence. And then we have examples of using indexing 
and also slicing to basically slice out individual words or individual characters out of our string. So let's get started by actually copying this variable here because we are going to be using it and we can paste that into our interactive shell here in idle. Now once we've done that we can start with the first print statement here. So here we have index 5 of our variable spam. So starting from the beginning we have um, index 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we should get the character s back. Next up we have negative index 3 of our variable spam, which means we start from the beginning of our string because it's a negative index. So here we have minus 1, minus 2, minus 3. So we should get back the character r. Next up, we are combining slicing with simple indexing. So here we start at index 0, all the way up to, but not including, index 4. So that means we have index 0, 1, 2, 3, but we skip 4. So we have the word 4 here. And then we are using string concatenation to add an additional character, specifically the character at index 5. And we already know from the first print statement here that this is going to be the character s. So we have 4 plus the character s, so 4s without any space. Next up we have another slice that we are working with, this time with two negative indices. So here we start at minus 3, all the way up to but not including the last character. So we know this is minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, so we should get back rs. And this is what is indeed being printed out. Next up we have another slice, but this time we are using a shorthand. So in this case we simply have colon 10 included in the brackets. And whenever we just start with a colon character we know we start at the very beginning of our string and then we go all the way up to but not including 10. So we already know this is index 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So the first two words for space score should be printed out. Now we are using the shorthand index to start from negative index 5 all the way to the very end. So that means this is minus 1, minus 2, 3, 4, 5. So we have basically this string here, ears dot, that should be printed out. And finally we have an example we haven't seen before. We simply have the colon character inside of our brackets and whenever we see something like that we now we have the shorthand notation like up here. If we have a colon character that means we start at the very beginning and if after the colon there's nothing there that means we go all the way to the end. So when we simply have the colon character here that means we start at the very beginning all the way up to the end. So it's basically the original string. There's an important difference though. In this case we would basically create a copy of that particular string and that can be quite important if you want to do some string manipulations later on. So in this case we would get back the entire string. Next up the question is which window displays the prompt character? Is it the interactive shell or is it the file editor? So we now in the interactive shell we evaluate whatever statement we type in just after pressing enter. So in this case this would indeed be the interactive shell that displays the prompt character. If instead we want to write a more extensive program we would use a file editor. In this case the individual statements would only be executed when we execute the entire program or the entire file that we wrote. And then finally we have the question what does the following line print? On first sight it looks like a regular print statement but we can see that at the very beginning we have that hash character and we learn that this is a comment. So if we take this here this will simply be a comment so it will not be executed and nothing will be printed out. So if we open our interactive shell here and we tap this in, we can already see based on the syntax highlighting that this text is displayed in red. And if we press enter here, we can see a new prompt is displayed, but nothing is evaluated, nothing is printed out. And that's of course because it's simply a comment. If instead we were to remove that pound sign at the very beginning and press enter again, then of course this print function would be executed and we would see hello world being printed out. Now that we learned about how we can work with strings and write our own programs, we're going to start with actual encryption. In the next video we're going to start with our first encryption program. Feel free to subscribe to the channel to not miss any new videos and see you guys in the next video.